Hello there and it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today we're going to have a look at what well, you can see there that's my um, RM Nimbus 186 and it's uh, still waiting for me to find a new SCSI hard drive for it I'm really really struggling to find a um, lower than 160 megabyte um, SCSI 1 hard drive 3.5 inch to fit that I've actually got one that's a hundred megabyte but it's five and a quarter double height so um, it won't fit in that case I need a three and a half inch uh, little um, anything 20 megabyte to uh, like 160 I think is the top it'll take um, for that so that's uh, on hold at the moment but what I thought I'd show you today is uh, the first computer made by um, RM which is research machines uh, this is a bit of a rarity uh, there weren't that many made of them and that's uh, this here. I'll oh, just tilt the camera up. This is a Research Machines 380Z. Now, this particular Research Machines 380Z was my high school's first ever computer. Um, the 380Z came out in 1977, so we're talking early early computer um, what can I tell you about it this particular model dates from between 19 I think it's a 1980 uh, model there's a service sticker inside it for 1981 um, the original machines were a kind of a bluey colour um, they didn't have the five and a quarter inch disk drives they had tape drive or an external eight inch disk drive so this is a slightly later model this one uh, so they're about 1980. Um, these are predate the BBC micros. The um, BBC did have some input into like I won't say um, schools computers, but edu educational computers um, before the uh, BBC. Actually, they made um, the S100 um, computers, which were like a, a bus computer, very very similar kind of architecture to this. Uh, but they didn't do a great deal and this was one of the first computers that was like really designed for the educational market it's a CPM computer um, I think this this one's actually pretty much maxed out I think this one's got 64k of uh, memory in it it's got dual five double sided double density five and a quarter inch disk drives which is unusual and this one has a expanded, it has a colour graphics card, a high resolution colour graphics card fitted to it. Now these, I think when this first came out in uh, 1977, they cost £7,000. Uh, now there was a scheme on at the time to get computers into schools. And I think the government, would, if the school put up half the money, the government put up the other half. So it cost the, uh, I think it cost our... Um, school it must have been at least like four thousand pounds back in 1980 um, and the reason I got it was uh, it had spent many many years I was I started that high school in 1990 and it had spent the last seven or eight years um, on a trolley under a, a dust sheet and I keep pest I was quite friends with the um, IT teacher at the school and I kept pestering him over it what was he going to do with it was he ever going to get rid of it and he keeps saying it was the first the school's first ever computer and uh, he couldn't really um, get rid of it anyway not long before I uh, left the school he um, said if I wanted it I could um, take it which I uh, <laughs> I um, yeah I snapped his hand up at, snapped his hand off at that and I've just seen one of these sell on eBay for a ridiculous amount of money uh, for what it is and that was untested uh, this is fully working I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of uh, of this computer I've not just got the computer I've got a ton of software that I got with it um, back then and there's a few discs in here which I made back when I got it but um, they're just backups all the original discs I got with it are actually still good they still work um, teacher's pack what's this now um, I've not even opened some of these things 
There we go, input teachers pack, micros in schools, um, introduction program for teachers. I mean, this is when I think the kids probably knew more about um, computers uh, than the teachers did. So this is a <coughs> complete with desk, teachers desk, um, teachers program notes. So it's a basic, I think it's basic computing, um, yeah, guide to basic, it's how to teach children how to uh, program in basic. So I'm really going to have a look at that myself. Uh, I really want to have a, more of a play with this. I, like I said, I got it all them years ago, I think it was 15 when I got it, and um, I'm considerably older than that now. And um, it's just sat there, basically. Uh, Ever since I got it, oh, we've even got the original using the 380Z microcomputer. Manual for the graphics card. Then we've got text editor, reference manuals. We've got the COS reference manual, which is like the inbuilt operating system, it's like your line monitor operating system. Extended basic version 5. I mean, look at the thickness of these manuals. There's proper meaty, decent manuals. Then we have the uh, Z80 assembly. This is a Z80 processor. I think it's a 2 MHz Z80 processor, not a Z80A. And then we have. Um, oh, we've got another uh, support manual for extended basic. So I've got quite a comprehensive look. A lot of uh, stuff there. Now, this is what I absolutely love about this computer. It's all metal. That's like an equipment case that they build a piece of scientific equipment into it. It is so rugged. The keyboard is all metal as well. Really, really, really rugged. High quality computer. You can understand why it costs so much money when it was new. And have you ever seen this on a computer before? That's not a keyboard lock. That you have a key to start the computer. Now that's one thing that I've had to do with this. Uh, when I got it all them years ago, um, the key had gone missing years before and no one had a key for it to start it. And when I first got it, I must admit, all I did is I bypassed the um, switch. So you just plug power in at the back of it and it just fired up. And now I know this thing's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's got some historic intro, uh, historic value to it. I didn't really like the idea of that. So I found a key that fit the lock. It didn't turn the lock, but it actually fit. And what I did was I dismantled the uh, barrel inside the lock. I took all the little plates out of it and I rearranged the plates inside the um, lock barrel to suit that key. Now I had to take a couple out because it wouldn't work with um, all five in it, so it's only actually got three plates in there. But the key works and it means it can be used with a key. So you've got off, on and lock. So what you can actually do with this thing is you can switch it on, on and then into the lock position, take the key out. And if kids are using it, it disables the reset button and they can't switch it off so they can't mess about with it. Um, right, before um, we get any further with it, I will uh, fire it up and we will uh, see this whole thing running. I've never done any restoration work to this computer whatsoever. The only thing I've done is that um, key repair. So if there's a loud bang because one of the uh, mains caps goes, you know what it is. Because I haven't replaced them in it yet. It's something I will do. So let's uh, power the monitor up. Again, um, this is the only monitor so far I can really use it on. I know it's not good having it on a... Uh, LCD, but it does mean at least I can film it on the uh, on the camera without any flicker. It would look a lot nicer on a uh, on a proper on a proper vintage um, CRT monitor. But there we go, as we can see, cos 3.4. So we need to boot it because that's just like the basic um, like a line editor. Um, so what we will do. We have a CPM boot disk of BASIC here, so if we stick that in the uh, drive, and now booting one of these is so simple, to boot it you press B, and there we go, nice and fast, there we go, research machines, 31k um, CPM, I think there is, 
bit of 64k of memory in this one, so it's got 32k plus 32k. Um, DIR, let's see what's on this step. I think we've just got basic on here, yes we have. So let's load basic. There we go. RML Extended Basic Version 5.0 Copyright C 1980 by Research Machines Now I'm surprised that Research Machines, yeah I mean they had some success with the RM Nimbus later on but they really had the ability to um, do what the BBC did and I think there was actually some they wanted to get uh, uh, Research Machines involved in the project but for some reason they decided um, they wouldn't do. Uh, I don't know why really, I don't really know the story into that. They did bring out another system um, very similar to this called the 480Z which was, it was a desktop system with um, the processor and the keyboard and everything built into one. And I think the idea was that you used one of these as a server with a hard drive. You could get a 5 megabyte uh, external Winchester hard drive for these. Which from the one I've seen was basically the same case stacked on top with a 5 megabyte, um, probably 8 inch Winchester hard drive in it. And they were networkable so you could have one of these and so many of the 480Zs as a little network. But it said the BBC seemed to take off a lot more. I don't know how many of them they sold. They went on pretty much from this to start uh, with the RM Nimbus systems. Now let's see what we've got on some of these discs. These have got some basic programs on them. Now I'm not... They will all be educationally... Um, educationally based, being that um, they did come from the school. Let's have a look at this. Let's see what's on here. So if we uh, take that disc out put that in there for safety and these mightn't load, I've not even tried loading these um, probably since I was at I left school so uh, let's see if anything happens yep that's right let's have a look see what we've got now these monkey, let's have a look at monkey shall we Oops. Yeah, you you can uh, be a bit too quick for this computer when you type it. Uh, where was that? There it is. M O N K E Y. Turn. Let's see what it does. I've not tried loading this before, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. There we go, ready, let's run that. Let's let the disk drive stop. Bullet velocity range. So, let's put in 30. Enter. Ah, Right, okay, I think what the idea is is you have to hit that with that. I don't know, am I going to hit it? Am I going to hit it? Ooh, just missed. Bullet velocity range, right. Well, if we missed at that, let's try 28. An intelligent monkey. Ah, it stayed at the top this time. Alright, well, let's try something else, shall we? So, uh, to break out of a basic program, Shift and Z. Oh, sorry, Control and Z, I think. And I think we've crashed the computer here. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't like Shift and Z. I think it should have been Control and Z too. Um, so, we have to. There we go, hit the reset. These discs obviously don't have a uh, boot on them, so we have to go back to something we can boot the disc with. We'll try one more program and then um, and we'll have a look at something else on it. So we try B to boot. 
see if we've got anything else. Like I said, I've no games for it. Um, we've got Assembler. What have we got here? OTI. Right, so we're um, there. Let's try. Let's load basic. Let's see what else we've got on that disc. Let the disc drive stop. Now I said that these drives are um, double sided, they are, but uh, it treats each side separately, so you've actually got four disk drives. So you've got A side 1, side 2, B, B um, I think comes up as 3 and 4. Um, I need to read the manual on how to use the other disk drives at the moment, I can only, at the moment I can only remember how to use the um, primary drive. Right, let's try scope. So we type load. No, we don't. Let's delete that. So you have to have to give it some time. It's not quick. I think that's how it was spelled. Let's see what it's going to do. There we go, let's run that. P to continue, C to end, oh. Pause P, C to continue. So what do you do? I'm not actually sure what you do with this one. to get it to do anything. But um, anyway, uh, like I say, at least it shows you the uh, the computer does actually still work. No, that's not, um, it's not happy with that. Something doesn't like that. Let's uh, reset the computer. Let's take the desk out. And what I will do now, let's switch it off. Oops. Take the monitor off. Let's get that out of the way. And I will let you have a look inside it. Now I took the screws out earlier so I could uh, do that little repair on the switch. So I have got the top off it. And we pull it up, pop it out. And there we go. So as we can see, there are the uh, disk drives, one stacked on top of the other. They are the full height, big disk drives. It doesn't have a motherboard as um, per se. What you've got is this. It's like the um, bit like the um, RM Nimbus in this way, and the um, S100 computers made by um, Acorn. That is your um, bus there. I think it's based on um, one of the IEEE um, standards. Uh, one of these is your processor card, then you have your graphics card, you have your disk drive controller card, you have your you have your high resolution um, graphics card. So as you can see it is all card based. I think I need to glue that back down, that's part of the power, can the power input which is uh, should be glued to the front there I think. Um, the power supply We'll check them caps out. We thought the caps in a Commodore um, PET were big. Look at them. Got two of the buggers in here. And uh, the power supply itself is under there. It's very basic. One massive mains transformer, a bridge rectifier into uh, them, and then some basic 12 and 5 volt smoothing. Mains powered finger chopper of a fan on the back. Uh, I'll show you the back of it now. The back's quite interesting in its own right. Let me just uh, disconnect the keyboard. 
I will leave the power plugged in just for uh, ground protection. But ooh, right, let's have a look here. What have we got on the back? We have a um, printer interface there. We have um, user I/O interface. The ambiguous uh, ambiguous cassette recorder. Uh, television output, so you can just plug it into a normal um, RF of a TV uh, keyboard connector there, and the uh, video connector. Now, what I've had to do this, this is how um, old it is. It's before uh, BNC became a standard for video outputs. I mean, it's phono now, but uh, that's it's like an, actually an RF connector. You used to find a lot of these on like CB aerials and things like that. And fortunately, uh, one of my old oscilloscopes uses them for its probes, and I have a adapter like that, which allows me to use a BNC on them with my oscilloscope. So I'm just using that to allow me to connect a modern um, modern BNC to it to get the monitor output. So that's really it. Um, so I've got people might like to see this because it's a little bit on the unusual side I don't think that many of these were really made um, obviously not all schools at that time had computers they were very expensive and our school just had this one so yeah um, I think I'll leave it at that because I've already rambled on far too long. I will be doing some more videos on some of my uh, vintage computers. I'll probably do some more videos on this. Um, now I know it's up and running, um, I'm going to look at getting some more CPM software for it and um, seeing what else it can do because I'd really like to see what the colour capabilities of it are. I'll have a read through the manual of the colour card and anyway and um, see what that says. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that and um, well thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.